Hello, everybody, and welcome to this on-demand event presented by Demand Drive on SDR forecasting and capacity planning. I'll be your host today, AJ Alonzo, and I have a, a significantly more knowledgeable and, and higher-level expert guest than I on this webinar with me, and Lindsay Fry. Lindsay, how are you? Good. You are so kind. Thanks, AJ. <laughs> I have to be well. my boss. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good point. Um, so, Lindsay, before we, we dive into everything, give uh, the audience a bit of background on you. Who are you? What are you doing here? Why do you know so much about forecasting and capacity planning? Yeah, absolutely. So I have been, I started my career way back when, I won't admit when, um, as a VDR at a tech company. So got my career started in this role and have been managing hundreds of different client engagements um, over the course of the last you know 18 to 20 years and I've been working with lots of different SDRs and I've worked with organizations where you know we've set up the right goals where we've set up the goals that are a little bit misaligned so I've seen the good and the bad um, at demand drive specifically you know we help b2b tech companies to build and manage sales development teams so goal setting is so important and each and organization that we support is a little bit different, right? So it's it's really, it, it's not a one size fits all model. So it's really, mm -hmm. really crucial to um, get goal setting right and, and get it right early on. Well said. Yeah, I think it's probably, if not the most, one of the most important things to do in any of the engagements we have. So um, definitely a great topic for, for this webinar. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we get into any of the stuff. It is pre-recorded, so you could be listening to this the day after we promote it, you could be listening to this in 2035. Thank you so much for listening to us like more than 10 years down the line. It means a lot to us. Um, so you're not going to be able to interact with us live. But if you do have questions that come up during the presentation, you can feel free to shoot them over to us, marketing at demanddrive.com, or head to the website and go to the contact us form. Somebody will get back to you. So rest okay. assured, if you have any questions that come up, we got you. Okay. Awesome. So. Let's go through what we're going to talk about today, what you can expect to learn on this webinar. Um, we're going to start with aligning goals with desired outcomes, so making sure that the goals that you have set actually end up leading to the results that you're looking for. Uh, we're going to talk about what an average SDR can produce realistically based on the variables that you have within your company. Uh, how to use that number that you figure out to setting proper goals, and then what it looks like if you do that right, if you do it wrong, um, and really kind of Goldilocks it at the end. Sound good, Lindsay? That sounds like a plan. <laughs> Perfect. So let's start uh, with that idea of aligning goals to outcomes and really why it's so important to understand what you're looking to achieve before you put goals in place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good, great place to start, actually. So um, when setting up your SDR team, whether you're setting it up for the first time or you're, you know, a lot of organizations annually will look what, at what the goals are for the company and then figure out sort of what the goals for the SDR team will be. Um, so you make a good point, AJ. It's really important to start at where do you want to be from a, even from a revenue generation standpoint. So the Sort of the, the assessment that I go through with clients is, you know, okay, over the course of this next year, where do you need to be from a close one revenue standpoint? And then obviously looking at, you know, what is an average deal size? You know, what is um, the current close rate for the sales team off of opportunities? Uh, then we can back it up and look at, you know, how many, so then that tells us how many opportunities do we need to serve up to sales in order for them to hit that, um, that conversion rate that will lead to that, that revenue number. Then we need to look at, I mean, if you have data already, because you've had a BDR team or SDR team in place where you know what the conversion rate from qualified lead to opportunity is, you can sort of plug that, uh, that number in to really look at, you know, if, you know, if you uncover 10 handoffs to sales from the BDR team and eight of those convert to an opportunity, that's an 80% conversion off of handoff. That gives you information to, to inform how many raw handoffs you need to deliver to sales in order for that opportunity number to match where they need to be from a, from a close one revenue standpoint. And sort of going up the funnel, um, you're going to want to look at how many 
you know, how many calls does it take to help make how many to make a certain number of connections that will then convert to the right number of handoffs. So you want to look at all of those different KPIs. Um, so that's important, and we can we can dig into that in a little bit mm -hmm. uh, in a little bit later. Uh, you also are going to want to look at how are you measuring the success of your SDR team. I can certainly give some guidance there. Uh, I think SDR should be measured. Um, you know how much opportunity creation can be attributed back to that function. Uh, and then yes, close one revenue is important, but that the onus is more on the sales team in right. that in that perspective. And then you know certainly what drives that opportunity creation? Well, things like activity, things like, you know, handoffs. So there's definitely a quantity and quality play here. Um, certainly I talk to organizations where they, the, the driver is really, we need to book meetings, we need to book appointments. And that's okay. I think that's, that's one way to structure it, but realize that your conversion from meeting to opportunity will probably be lower. And then some um, organizations really do fight, focus on the pipeline revenue. So understand that the uh, raw numbers of handoffs may be a little bit lower if the focus is on those high converting leads. Um, and it really depends on how many salespeople do you have? How much practice do you want to give them? You know, how, you know, how, how transactional in nature is the, is the sale? So those are, those are the things that you want to think about when setting up you know, goals in general, and then how you want to ultimately sort of compensate your, your BDR team. Um, and again, I think really marrying the quality and quantity piece, right? You can't have a BDR team making 10 calls a day and spending hours doing research and expect that you'll have enough of a sample size of, you know, conversations that will convert, but you also you know, there's a point of diminishing return where there's too much activity and, and the work isn't as thoughtful. So that's, that, those are some things to think about. For sure. And I think it, to your point earlier, it kind of depends on the, the organization a bit too, because if I am a newer company and I have SDRs who um, really, I just want them to book meetings and I want to give my sales reps that yeah. practice so that we can yeah. learn what it's like in the space and really get our teeth kind of sunk into the industry. You do incentivize meetings Absolutely. because you want as many of those as possible. Maybe if you're a more mature company and you want your SDR specifically to, to pass over quality meetings that will eventually turn into forecastable opportunities, you don't incentivize book meetings as much because it really incentives Absolutely. really put into play what the SDR is going to ultimately pass to your, your AE team. Absolutely. And I think if in sort of the case where you have maybe a less mature sales team or a larger sales team and you really need to keep them busy, you want to give everybody practice you have a really large, maybe total addressable market, um, you're gathering market intelligence and you want that BDR to book meetings, then you really should be compensating them around meetings booked and not necessarily opportunity creation. So, you know, the outcome, what you want the outcome to be should really be tied to how you're compensating that team. Great. Speaking of, of how you're compensating the team, let's go into really what the team is able to produce, because I think a lot of people start with step, I guess, in this in this webinar, step three instead of step two, which is capacity planning. And they think about, OK, I know what I want my SDR team to produce. Great. Mm -hmm. Let me set a goal and then we'll figure it out from there. But they skip the capacity planning stage where you can really right. think about how much can your team realistically produce based on right. some variables. So let's let's dive into that and some examples that you've seen. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. I think, um, you know, you're right. Organizations do they they know where they need to be from an opportunity creation and a revenue um, standpoint. But I'll talk to clients all the time, and they're like, "Well, we need we need forty opportunities a month from the BDR team." Well, that's in the fine. sky number, <laughs> and that's okay. But they want to do it with two reps, and so that's when. I'll have to push back and dig in and figure out. And usually the answer is, well, that's just kind of what we need. So that's fine, but we need to build the right team structure. Otherwise you're gonna have BDRs that are burning out. Everyone's going to be disappointed because we're not gonna hit the goal. Um, so I think capacity planning is so crucial and it really is dependent on a lot of different variables, right? As you mentioned. So, um, you know, a couple things to take into consideration is, you know, your market in general, 
and you know the size of deal that we're talking about or if we're if you're selling a you know six figure software platform into a fairly finite universe multiple stakeholders you need to do a lot of research and personalization um you're pro you're probably going to be looking at you know somewhere between like four to eight quality handoffs per month um per BDR, like that would be just sort of a best guess mm -hmm. um, versus me, where and where it's all outbound. So that's another variable is, it, you know, are you feeding your BDR team warm leads? If so, the number of handoffs yeah, should be higher for sure. If it's completely 100% account-based outbound prospecting tends to be a lower raw number of handoffs. Um, certainly things like the tools that you're providing your team will um will help so things like an outreach or a sales loft or a yes where you know sales enablement tool are you providing them with good data you know that that makes their life a lot easier how much digging do they need to do for contacts um that's that's going to influence influence what their capacity is on a daily basis um and like i said you know how much personalization and research needs to go into into their work you know if you're selling a more transactional product, right? It's a large total addressable market. Price point is lower. You're selling to, you know, one or two specific personas. That BDR can handle probably more calling, touching more unique accounts per day versus the BDR that's calling on behalf of a 250K software platform into, you know, the Fortune 500 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things I think about when figuring out what the capacity is for one SDR. Certainly, if you have historical data to analyze, that's helpful. So if you've had SDRs in the past that have been doing something and you take averages and, you know, all else staying consistent, you have some data to, to look at. And then, you know, there's always some optimization that can happen, but, you know, you're probably not going to make huge, you know, they're probably not going to double their number if nothing else changes. Um, so, you know, I think those are, those are what I would be looking at. And then it's, you know, how many calls realistically or activities can an SDR put forth in a day, you know, at demand drive, we talk about you know, phone, email, social touches. Uh, those are sort of the primary mediums, I guess, that, that SDRs are, are, are reaching out to, to prospects. Um, and, you know, it really varies if I'm giving numbers, we're looking at, probably, you know, anywhere from 60 to 100 total activities a day, you know, outside of maybe some outreach cadences and emails that are going out in the background. I think that's an important piece of it, but 60 to 100, again, based on those variables we mentioned, and then you're going to want to look at, you know, what percentage of the time are we connecting with someone in a meaningful way, where we're getting a piece of qualification information, where we are getting um, passed over to the right person, and right now, across all our programs, I'm seeing that, you know, fall somewhere between kind of four to 12 percent, again, depending on the market, the persona, um, et cetera. And then you're going to want to look at how many, you know, how many lead, how many of those connections will result in a handoff. Um, and again, this is going to vary based on whether this is an inbound follow up and outbound outreach, and, and that can fluctuate from three to 15% um, of all your connections. So just wanted to share some general numbers, but again, you know, we could, we could do, um, if, if we had the, the specific variables and, and, um, and if we looked at things like inbound, outbound market, T, um, TCV, then we can get more specific as to what, what you'd want to be um, goaling your SDR team. Yeah. I think it's, very telling to hear you talk about all of the different variables that go into it and the the sort of high and lows of the percentages of conversions because mm -hmm. like it it seems like something if you're running an SDR team that it would be easy to pick a goal and have your SDRs go for it and then just adjust as needed but yep. when you really do think about all of the variables involved in picking goals that make sense for your company in your space with the tools that you have and the universe that you're selling into yep. it just layers on layers on layers of things that you have to consider if you want to properly incentivize your sdrs and actually find a level of performance that makes sense Absolutely. 
yeah. versus what you were talking about, where if you put something in place that requires them to do double or triple the activity that theoretically they need, then they're going to burn out, they'll churn, and that's a whole separate issue. Yep, absolutely. And I think the industry that you're in too, you know, our cybersecurity clients, we see a very different connection rate um, than that of our healthcare tech clients, right. you know, generally speaking. So I think that's something to analyze. And I think the more sort of analysis analysis you can do on the front end is a great place to start. And then obviously, as your team gets started, use the data and the, mm -hmm. and the um, rates and uh, all the numbers that you that actually come true and use that to iterate and to then optimize the goal setting in the future. And obviously, again, like if you have historical data based on, you know, team performance, and if nothing has changed, then you can't expect to double their goal if there's nothing that's, the, if there's no material change to how they're set up. Uh, so I think that's important as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a great segue into the next section. And, and to your point there about like, doubling if nothing's changed. I think a lot of teams look at at this problem as if it were a math problem. And and within math, you can scale numbers infinitely. Two times two is always going to be four. There are no other variables associated with that. But in, in sales, if 80 activities equals two booked meetings, 160 activities will not always equal four booked meetings. There's things like diminishing returns and other variables that you have to include when you're thinking about that equation. So um Let's let's segue now into, into sort of setting those accurate goals and really understanding what it's like to take all of the variables into consideration, the capacity of your SDR, and and kind of honing in on, okay, now that I know all of this, how can I set up goals that make sense for my team? Yeah, no, that's great. And and I think too, another piece that that we didn't touch on is certainly around the ability of the SDR. So it is definitely Very a good math point. problem for sure. Um, but there is an art to this. And you, and to your point, AJ, it's not um, you know, okay, I have two SDRs and they're be they're able to achieve this. So if I double the team, they'll simply double the numbers. There's actually a lot of times efficiencies that you gain with larger teams. Um, and it, you know, we're human beings, there's gonna be SDRs that are a little bit stronger than others. So, you know, the right training and coaching, all of those things can optimize your current team um, and, and improve performance. But I think as far as, you know, setting accurate goals, um, I think a couple things here. Realize that goals can be adjusted just because you set a goal at the start of the year. And then again, there is some material change three months later. Maybe marketing has created a, an amazing campaign that's flooding the team with inbound leads. Their goals should change and that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, and I think communicating with the, with your SDR that that is that that's something that might happen is also okay. And um, communication is key. I think always making sure that your team knows how they're um, going to be compensated, understands what they're accountable for, and if something changes, that you communicate that to, to them in real time mm -hmm. is really really important. Um, sure. And I think you know you'll you'll be able to again, kind of adapt and iterate as, as you go along. Um, yeah. I think this is where like you see a lot of teams, this is where they start the process, right? They start the backward water falling from their conversion rates and their close rates and stuff yeah. at this point before the capacity planning that we talked about. But now that you theoretically, if you've been doing this in, in yeah. order of, of the slides that we've presented, now that you have your capacity and all the variables yeah. in place, this is when you would use that, that sort of water falling method to, to go backwards from your close rate to understand, um, looking at conversion rates, what your team should be doing KPI wise in terms of activity metrics to, to hit the, the goal that you have in place ultimately, whatever it might be based on yep. revenue numbers. Yeah, and usually, you know, it's, it's some kind of blend. I mean, this is what I see be the case most often. It's some kind of blend between compensating on handoffs, right, on those you know, quality appointments set up that we're qualifying a prospect and we're setting them up on a discovery call or a demo and then compensate. I think there, there, there should be some type of compensation tied to, you know, opportunity creation mm -hmm. um, in, in most, in most cases. Um, so that, that, you know, that they're, they're incentivized really around quality. Um, but again, we, we talked about situations where you may want to just drive volume in the beginning. Um, and so I think that, you know, 
as long as you've communicated the goal, you've you've based it in it on based on data, math, right. ability. Um, you know, tenure of the team is important, right? So if these are brand new SDRs that have never done the SDR role before, I think you need to take that into account. There mm -hmm. is going to be ramp time. So, you know, the goals of a new team in the first three months shouldn't necessarily be what their goals are in, you know, beyond that first three months. So keep that mm -hmm. in mind. You want the you want the SDRs to be engaged. You want them to be excited. Um, you want them to be challenged. And I know we're going to talk about what happens yeah. when, when you set the wrong goals, either too easy or, or too difficult. Um, but I think as long as you're looking at, okay, we need to be here as an organization from a revenue standpoint, I know the capacity of one SDR, therefore, you know, we need each, we think that the goal should be based on all of this analysis we've done, the goal should be eight handoffs per month and 60% of those should convert to an opportunity, then that helps you also right size the team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that's obviously there's a cost to adding head count, but if this is where you need to be, and this is what is, you know, true of the, what the team can produce, then you can sort of right size the team and you know, okay, I'm going to need four people, five people, two people um, in order to hit this goal. Yeah. I think the the biggest thing to, to take away from what I, I heard you talking about is none of this is static, right? This should be a dynamic process where monthly, Absolutely. quarterly, and in, in some set period of time, you're reevaluating the goals Absolutely. that you set in place because you have more data to base them on. You have more conversation notes to understand the capacity of your team and yep. whether or not what you've set makes sense. Um, and it allows you to adjust as necessary to find what essentially like the true level of performances for your team. It, in, in economics, I was an econ major, so I have to nerd out a little bit about this, but they call it ceteris paribus, all things remain equal. If you look at economic models, they take the ceteris paribus and they just remove as many variables as, right. as they can when extrapolating data. And and I think for, for sales teams, they can take a similar approach where knowing the basics, yep. if they can if they can solidify that foundation and then extrapolate from there, you have a much better justification for the numbers that you put in front of your team versus pie in the sky. We would love to hit this because of our revenue goals. Go out and get them tiger. Like that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. No, I, I think that is such a great point. And I think your SDR team will really appreciate the fact that you are doing this level of analysis and they will be a lot more bought into the goals versus the, Hey, this is where we need to be. So you need to hit this. Right. And it is it, like, also it's, completely okay to have a stretch goal. I think that's yeah. important, right? Because you may have a, you know, amazing SDR sort of A++++ who's just uh, like, for whatever reason, everything they do, they are going to have more handovers than the rest of the team. So I think for those people, like having a, having a, so, okay, this is our expectation. This is what we need. Um, this is your goal. And then having a stretch goal that I mean, maybe it's a it's sort of a team goal that everyone can get behind. And um, that that's absolutely okay. That can be kind of your pie in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, if we hit this, we're having a big celebration. And then, but I think the the goal of like what is optimal 100 percent performance um, should be certainly rooted in in this level of analysis. For sure. Yeah, it, it made me think of this quote that I, I put into this presentation. I know we were going to talk about it, but yeah. the idea that um, sales targets are often set by people who have no direct ties to the people that are responsible for then hitting those goals. So right. in this case, it's it's about um, like a publicly funded company. They have shareholders they're beholden to. So they set goals that are based on things that, that are, are dictated by the market, that SDRs have no, they, they don't care. They're like, these goals right. are just unattainable. But you, right. you can do the same thing for... A B2B SaaS company that's publicly fu or that's funded by a VC. Yep. The VC has goals. They have revenue goals yeah. they want you to hit, but they're not, they don't know what it's like being yeah. an SDR, right? They're not tied into that world. So there's a disconnect between the people who are setting the goals and the people who are actually responsible for them most of the time. So I don't think it'll kill you. That's a bit of a, an exaggeration. Yeah. But I love this quote, I mean, this, right? But, yeah. And there's pressure on people from the top who then, you know, that put pressure on the sales VPs and directors who then put pressure on the team. And, mm -hmm. and that's okay. We should all be motivated and driven right. and excited about hitting these goals. But I think the challenges comes in when you, um, when they really become like that pie in the sky, like 
nobody's bought into them. And I know that's where we're going to go next. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like to call this kind of Goldilocksing the idea, understanding if it's too hot, too cold, or just right. Yeah. Like there are like goals that. that can be too lofty. There are goals okay. that can be far too easy. And then there are goals that are just right. So we, we touched a little bit on the just right when you find that true level of performance for your team. But um, talk about like what happens if the goal is too easy and what happens if the goal is too difficult, how it impacts the, the team. Yeah, absolutely. So I think when goals are too easy, right, maybe you, uh, you know, and this can be, this can happen for a myriad of reasons, but, you know, again, back to like, if there's a material change, like all of a sudden there's a influx of inbound leads and we haven't changed the goal. And now all of a sudden it's sort of a layup getting handoffs and, and all of a sudden the SDR can hit their goal halfway through the month. And certainly if you have the right individuals in place, they're going to continue pushing and hopefully you've set up a compensation plan, which incentivize them to keep driving for more. But it, it, it's, it stands to reason they may also kind of kick up their feet and, and not may, I hate to say mail it in, but a little <laughs> bit, right? Like, they it may, in. you know, it's just, it's going to be, um, they're, they're not going to be at capacity and you're going to be, um, and it, it can create a compensation plan that's really out of whack and mm -hmm. that, you know, for looking at an executive standpoint, like that is, that is also um, really crucial is making sure that you're aligning goals and that those goals sort of correlate to the right compensation structure for the team so that you're not, you know, overpaying and the goals are so easy that you're, that, that it's, you know, that it's, you're overpaying for, for, um, for leads. But you also, you know, when we go into what happens if the goals are too hard, if there's no buy-in from the team, and they're going to throw their hands up and say, my goodness, like, this is just, I'm never going to be able to achieve this, you know, good goal setting, the, the goal should be challenging, but attainable. Um, and if you have an SDR team, and nobody is hitting goal, and nobody has hit goal, you really need to kind of look in the mirror and figure out like, the goal alignment is, is certainly going to be off. And what's going to be, what's going to happen, you're going to have churn on your BDR team. There are so many organizations hiring for BDRs. So the, you know, these folks can jump, they can move to another organization really yeah, easily like that. like that. And, and so you're going to have churn, you're going to have to rehire. There is a cost of turnover, certainly. Um, and you're going to be, you're going to be now behind the eight ball when it comes to hitting your goals in general, because you're going to be mm -hmm. without a full team, um, or you're going to be with a sort of a team that's just simply not motivated. Um, so that's why it is so important to make sure the goals are, are accurate. And again, to your point, AJ, they can be adjusted, communicate mm -hmm. with your team, let them know like, Hey, if there is a material change to something, or if we notice that the degree of difficulty is a lot more challenging than we thought, we will look at this and we will evaluate this on a quarterly basis. Let's say they will, they'll appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. and you can sort of like level it out as you go through the year, um, but again, you want to find that balance between goals that are challenging, where at the end of the month, the SDR is saying, whew, I worked really hard to hit that goal, but I did it. Um, and, and I think that's sort of the, the key. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, too, that you can take a look at your team overall and really understand based on who is hitting goals, if you have found that sort of true level of performance where you know for that period of time, this goal makes sense. It is attainable, Absolutely. but it is challenging. Um, the reps who do hit that goal and maybe go above and beyond, those are like your A and B players. They're the ones that you want to focus on and really make Absolutely. sure that they stay within your organization. But it also tells you that the C-level players, the ones who, even if the goal is attainable, if they haven't hit it, those are the ones that you need to work on and make sure that like you're giving them the resources they need to move up into that upper echelon of A and B level players. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I think that's, that, that is, that is definitely the analysis you should be doing. Yeah. The ramifications of goal setting go way beyond just yeah. sales. It's yeah, all of it, this stuff. It's impacted. To your point, it helps with career pathing. Who are your eight players that you absolutely want to retain that they know there's a path, right? Because the SDR role is typically a launch pad into, you know, sales or marketing or client success. So you want to make sure you're motivating those people, not only monetarily, but with, um, 
you know, understanding what their career aspirations are. And then to your point, AJ, if you have someone who's kind of a C player, is this person right for the role? Is it something that you can train on or not? And, but that gives us insight as well. Yeah. Your training team will definitely thank you. Um, All right. So let's, let's wrap all of this up. We've gone through a lot of stuff today, but if you were to go from, from start to finish, how would you kind of document the journey that we've taken in terms of accurately setting up um, these like goals for your team? Yeah. So I think the first, the first exercise I would do is, you know, what we talked about at the beginning, like where do you need to be from an organization, like a revenue generation standpoint, and then go do the backward waterfall math. So that's the first thing, right? So understanding what are your current conversion rates based on that? How many leads do you need based on what we know one SDR can produce, you know, and look at all of those variables, the tools you're giving them inbound versus outbound, the market, um, average contract value, uh, then you can figure out how many SDRs you need on your team in order to hit those goals. And then you can think about, um, you know, what the, how much you should be compensating and what you should be setting as as the goal for each SDR. Um, So I think the the backward waterfall math, figuring out where you need to be and, and, and then based on all the data and the conversion rates, If you don't have that data, because maybe you're an early stage startup and you just don't have enough of a sample size of data to draw anything meaningful from it, you're going to have to do a little bit of guesswork. Um, And certainly I'm happy to chat with anyone who, and I can share some estimates and ideas on where you might want to start. Again, talking to your SDRs that this is something that can change. Um, so you've just dis- so you know what you want to achieve. You understand based on all the variables we discussed what an SDR's capacity is, um, and then you can give them a goal. Okay, let's say eight handoffs per month and six conversions, and then obviously continual communication and iterating that um, if there are material changes um, over the course of, of the year. Beautiful. Well, well wrapped up. Okay, um, good. Uh, I think you kind of teased the next part of this, but if, if anyone wants to continue talking about this topic and, and get in touch with Lindsay and ask her any questions, um, you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, again, you can email marketing at demanddrive.com or go to the contact us page on our website and fill out a form there. Uh, we'll get you in touch with Lindsay and you can continue this conversation and learn more about how to accurately forecast and, and, and capacity plan for your SDR team. But any last words you want to leave the audience with before we sign off here, Lindsay? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, again, if I'm happy to chat with anyone, talk about sort of the, you know, if they have questions on how to set the right goals for their organization, but at least these are some general things to think about and to consider as as you're setting it up. Awesome. Thanks for for hopping on with us, Lindsay. I I, I sure learned a lot. I know I I know a little bit about this already, but I would assume the audience would learn even more than me. So that's um, always a good thing to leave, leave with something you didn't know. Yes, That's I agree. Well, we can move you right over to the client success team and you can start. Okay, let's goal hold on. Let's pump some brakes yeah, here. All right. No, no. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Take care.